Good afternoon, Mr. Parker. Good afternoon, Chief Justice. Are you well? I'm fine, thank you, Chief Justice. Are you relaxed? Relatively. A little bit? Relatively. Or relatively. Okay. <clears throat> um, for how many years uh, have you practiced law? Uh, Chief Justice, I started my articles in 1977, and I've been in law ever since. It's about 40 years. And, um, and, um, how many acting, well, for how many months have you acted as a judge? In the High Court in the Western Cape, I've acted unbroken since October last year. So it would be four terms going into next term. And I also acted in 2005 in the Eastern Cape for one term. How long does it ordinarily take you to deliver a reserve judgment? Chief Justice, I've looked at my judgments in the last year, I've not delivered a single judgment longer than two months after the matter was heard. Both civil and criminal trials? Both Chief Justice. Thank you. JP? Thank you, Chief Justice. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Parker. Good afternoon, Chief Justice. Right. I'm going to disclose up front that I know you. We've known each other for a while, and we have a, a cordial relationship. And last year, we Sorry, last term we shared the floor and we used to have coffee together. Indeed, so for sir. what it is worth, I must disclose that. Uh, Mr. Parker, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Let me put it to you, there is racism on the bench, there is racism in the profession, and there is racism in South Africa. And obviously it varies from province to province. Were you to be recommended for appointment uh, to the bench, well, uh, how can you assist as a permanent judge, assist the leadership of the judiciary to eradicate racism and particularly in the context of skewed briefing patterns? Chief Justice, uh, JP, thank you. I, I firstly recognize the fact that racism is still very much a, a plague uh, and, and on all the levels that you just mentioned. If I were to be recommended and become a judge, I will, wherever I ident identify racism being practiced, I will definitely confront it. I will deal with it. And if I cannot deal with it effectively on my own, I will certainly bring it to the attention of management. With regard to skewed briefing patterns, I think we can only make a concerted effort to identify more people who were previously disadvantaged and who were not briefed, who didn't enjoy a fair slice of the cake, that they be brought into the system. While we're, excuse me, whilst we're talking about skewed briefing patterns, isn't that a form of racism in the first place? Indeed, indeed, so I recognize and I, and I agree that it is so. Right. Mr. Parker, you have acted for a reasonably long time, both in the Eastern Cape and the Western Cape. Uh, do you believe pre-trials inter alia are an effective tool of case flow management? Because I'm asking you, because more and more, we are expected to do more and more with less and less resources. In fact, I am of the view that pre-trials are essential. It's one way, effective way, of addressing the, the, the court roles to, to manage cases and to effectively uh, reduce the, the, the case flow. I'm only, only exposed to what happens in the Western Cape and I've seen it working extremely well there, where, where a judge is seized with a file and sees it through to the point that it becomes trial ready and I've been a practitioner for all my life, or most of my life, and I know for practitioners it's easy to manipulate the system. I don't, don't confess that I've ever manipulated the system, but I know it's easy to do so, and I, and I, I recognize the fact that in some instances pr practitioners run the trial and, and, and directly or indirectly affect how the trial uh, drags itself out, but with effective uh, pre-trials and trial management, I think the, 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 the judicial officer is in control of that process. Right. By looking at your CV, one gets the impression that you are strong 
in the context of criminal law. Would you say your expertise, is that correct, number one? And number two, would you say your expertise is confined to criminal law or does it extend JP, to other areas of the law? Thank you. JP, it's, it's stronger, I would yes. say. Uh, I did practice criminal law for the early part of my career, for about 20 odd years. Thereafter, I diversified and I did less and less criminal work. I have done a fair my amount of labor work, a fair amount, not, not nearly enough, constitutional work and administrative law. My practice was unfortunately not the type that, that attracted much of that kind of work. I must also say in the last year that I've been at the High Court, I've been exposed to literally all sorts of different types of legal matters. And I, to the extent that I wasn't on top of things, I've quickly had to go and refresh my memory and learn. So I think I am fairly uh, covered. In my 38 odd years of active practice, I think I've, I've come across most areas and aspects of the law, either as a practitioner or a, an instructing attorney or appearing in the high court myself since the attorneys were allowed to appear and, 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 and also since I've been sitting on the bench. So I think I've come across most aspects. There obviously will be aspects that I haven't dealt with. But I, but I don't think my, my, my expertise is, is, is slanted too heavily uh, on criminal work. In, in, the, in the Western Cape in the last year since I've been there, I've done two, uh, three criminal trials. For the rest, I've been in the civil pool. And, and at the expense of sounding self-centered, I, I didn't experience insurmountable problems, JP. Right. Thank you, Mr. Parker. Thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you, Judge President. Ms. Stewart. Thank you, Chief Justice. Hello, Mr. Parker. Thank you, ma'am. Um, the comments from the General Bar Council uh, have a, a paragraph 15, a comment on your temperament, which I think it's fair to ask you to comment on. They mention, they say, the candidates' judgments can be somewhat intemperate. And then they go on to quote S. versus Nguenya, and they quote you saying, the cherry on the cake, as it were, was his absolutely unbelievable evidence. And that the accused would take the trouble of listening to his own version, he would be struck by the inherent improbabilities therein. What is your comment on the Bar Council's comment on your temperament? Thank you, ma'am. I've noted that comment, and if I must be brutally frank, with the benefit of hindsight, maybe I could have used better words or other words which were not as strong as those. I remember the matter very clearly. It was indeed a very brutal murder where the deceased lady was treated very, very badly. And the accused had a very flippant attitude, even when they got into the witness box. But if I must be brutally frank, and as I say, as I say with, with, the, with the benefit of hindsight, uh, it's probably a fair comment. That I, that I could have used better terminology to express the same word. But, but legal language is such that it is often loaded. And the circumstances of a particular case, I think, uh, often determine how one expresses oneself. Thanks, Chief Justice. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. Uh, Advocate Ngozi Thomas. Thank you, Chief Justice. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma'am. Um, the, uh, the GCB, if I may take you to the same uh, the, uh, the feedback received by this commission from the GCB, they had the following to say at paragraph 4.8 about your experience. I just want to test if you would agree with what they, they say there. They say there at 4.8, in the circumstances, the candidate's knowledge of the law while substantially focused on criminal law, is more varied than that. Is that fair? That, that's what I was trying to, to explain when, when Chief J JP asked me the yes. question. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner uh, Ngozi Thomas, President Mai. 
Thank you, Chief Justice. One of the judgments um, to which you refer in your questionnaire is the matter of the Department of Correctional Services against uh, poor crew. Are you with me? I, I'm listening, I'm listening, yeah. Right. yeah. Sorry, I couldn't see you earlier, that's why I didn't acknowledge you. <laughs> okay. you. You have commented here that um, despite the SA's ruling in favor of the relevant correctional officers, they are still battling today, four years after judgment was delivered, to get their justice. And I take special interest in this matter because I deliver the judgment and the minister of the relevant department is here to, to hear what you have to say. What is going on? Ma'am, if I understand your question to mean what is happening today. Yes, uh, I just want to understand if the court order has not been complied with four years after, you know. I, reg I regret to say that it has not fully been given effect to. We've been through various stages. We've had to, as you would know, go up to the Supreme Court of Appeal. The Supreme Court of Appeal then gave that judgment. We had to prepare further papers to threaten the department to reinstate them. There was a reluctance to reinstate them. They were then reinstated. Then the next battle was to get the department to pay them their back pay. We again had to prepare fresh papers. And on the doorstep of the court, they came in with a settlement and paid I'd say 85% of what is due to them. The, 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 the dilemma for the litigants is now whether they should in, 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 in continue with this battle for the other 15% and put their lives on hold. But what the department has done is it has paid them that 85 or 90% of what is due to them, but it refuses to promote them. So, so these, those unfortunate uh, correctional officers are still locked in battle. Thank you, Commissioner. Yes, Minister. If I'm allowed, I, I will make sure personally that I follow up the details of this matter. I'd appreciate that. I, I, I feel very strongly about that matter and those particular litigants. Afford it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. Commissioner Schmidt. Thank you, Chief Justice. Uh, shortly, or in short, rather, um, I see that you've been a member of the ANC for eight years. That was right in the beginning. Being? When the ANC was unbanned. So, 94 to about 2002. That would roughly be correct. Thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you, Commissioner Schmidt. You are excused, sir. Thank you very much, Chief Justice and the Commissioner. Thank you for the opportunity.